So we're coming to you today to talk about TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. It's a trade treaty that's being negotiated between the EU and the US, and quite a lot of people across Europe are really worried about the implications. So I've got three of them with me here today, and they're part of a group of more than 100 people who've come to Brussels to lobby their MPs, tell them about their concerns, and ask them to vote against this dangerous trade treaty. So, I'd like to start with Polly and ask her what her worries are. So, um, our Global Justice Now is very concerned about uh, three uh, potential impacts of TTIP. Uh, so concerned that we think you can't just address these issues, you need to stop the deal altogether. And the issues are the impact on uh, public services of um, opening up new markets for companies through this TTIP deal. Secondly, about the lowering of standards across a broad range of areas, uh, food, the environment, labour standards, uh, many important uh, uh, protections we've uh, en enshrined um, through our EU work could be at risk through a lowering of standards through the deal. And lastly, our big concern is about uh, new rules that could be brought in to protect investors, to protect corporations known as investor state dispute settlement rules. Shall we have a little think about what the detail might be with those rules that are going to be undermined? I mean, can you give people a concrete example of the sort of change they might see? Yeah, so we've seen um, these investment rules uh, in previous, many previous bilateral investment treaties or free trade, free trade agreements uh, between many countries. Uh, there are some really classic examples. One of them is uh, where the Swedish company Vattenfall um, sued the German government uh, after the um, nuclear disaster in Japan, the German government wanted to um, stop its nuclear program um, and as a result the Swedish company sued the German government for um, ceasing that nuclear program because it would obviously impact on the profits that a Swedish company gets from running those nuclear uh, power stations. Another big example has been uh, the tobacco company Philip Morris uh, suing the Australian government, um, weirdly through um, an investment treaty in Hong Kong, not even in Australia, so using you know the shady subsidiary company um, uh, locations to sue the Australian government when the Australian government decided it wanted to bring in plain packaging on tobacco. They've brought them in regardless but they've been sued by Philip Morris for the um, impact that that will have on Philip Morris the tobacco company's profits which is of course the intention of of the Australian government. So this is why people are saying that this treaty is actually a threat to democracy? Yes it, it's a, a huge shift of power from um, our elected representatives from people to corporations. It's been called the Corporate Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's great. Thank you for explaining that. Perhaps I can move on to Hilda now and ask you a little bit about why you've come to Brussels. Well, I'm here from the UK National Hazards Campaign, which is um, a network of organisations, safety reps and trade unions and individual uh, groups like the Construction Safety Campaign and the Stress Network, working for better health and safety, and um, specifically over the last five years, working against the massive attack on health and safety regulations and health and safety enforcement, which has gone on in the UK and has moved into Europe via the refit programme and all that sort of stuff, which sets us up very horribly for TTIP. And our concerns are all the ones that Polly has outlined about the lack of democracy, transfer of even more power to the corporate bodies and ISDSs. And our particular concern is how this is going to undermine occupational health and safety. Okay. The standards we have in the UK and in Europe are things that trade unions and workers have fought collectively for for hundreds of years. Yeah. And they're being rowed back at a rate of knots so that my children and my grandchildren will not have the same safety that we have. And we have our EU standards on chemicals, particularly through reach and the control of substances hazardous to health and also on labour standards we also have signed up to ILO conventions so we're up here the US is down there and we're very concerned about this idea about regulatory cooperation mm -hmm. fine why don't they come up to our standards mm -hmm. we'll take the higher financial standards that'll all be fine but we know it's going to be a race to the bottom yeah. Okay. It's going to put us all at risk, and that's what we're very concerned about. We see TTIP as fast-track deregulation. Okay. And so where are the unions on TTIP? I mean, are they generally opposed to it? They are now. It took a little while to get going. I have to say, I think we must be very grateful for, for the NGOs War on One and Global Justice Now, which was WMD, WDM. And um, the, all the unions now have opposed TTIP mm -hmm. and the TUC has also okay. passed a strong resolution so they're all, all opposed to it but I have to say that in all the stuff that's talked about the things that like ISDS is the NHS public services all those sort of things are talked about and we really need occupational health and safety to be put in there because one of the things that you, people need to realize is that huge numbers of people get injured 
get made, made um, ill and are killed by work across the EU and this costs a phenomenal amount of money mm -hmm. to the individuals to taxpayers and a tiny okay. amount to corporations and so we can't we can't afford this deregulation deregulation mm -hmm. will kill more will injure more and it will make more people sick at work in the environment in the community so that lowering of standards is also being opposed by trade unions across Europe not just the UK not just the UK trade unions and actually the French trade unions have come out also very yes. strongly against which is encouraging so perhaps we can move on to Ash now and you can tell us a little bit about why you're here yeah uh, I'm been campaigning a lot against TTIP in Leeds um, and I really agree with like what Hilda said. Um, I think it's really important to understand that what TTIP is going to undermine is these regulations and these standards that we've, that people like you know my parents and have been fighting for for so long and it's something that like really really the, the aspects of society sort of make me proud of my society so I think and I think it's just so undemocratic to hand more power to corporations when they already have so much power and influence over our society and we need to be more focused on sort of curbing that in influence and making them work for work for us and work for people and work for the environment and tackle these issues in a more like rational and sane way rather than just saying oh like free trade is the answer and that's going to work for everyone when we know it's not true and it's this sort of fundamentalist argument that I think is just gaining so much traction and we need to just be a bit more rational. <laughs> So what sort of things are you thinking about in your life that might be affected negatively if this treaty goes um, through? I, lots of things. I mean, really, workers' workers' rights. I'm worried about definitely the environment. I'm worried about privacy, the, the data laws, stuff yeah. like that. that. That really worries me. I think that's something that sort of gets brushed under the carpet a lot. Like you don't re, you, People don't focus on it, but they're such important rights that make, like, are so foundational to our society. Sure. I think that's going to threaten that a lot. Okay, so, yeah. that's great. Well, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate that you're here. I should point out that men are allowed to oppose TTIP as well. It's just a coincidence that we're all women here today. And um, these three women are off now to lobby their MEPs, so good luck with that. I hope that goes well, and I hope you manage to persuade them all to vote against TTIP. So thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Thank you.